Ah, straight in my eye. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, she did as well. Right then. <laughs>
And what you're going to do is you're going to cause that disc or whatever it is, a rim of your wheel or whatever, to deflect. Uh, this is a floating caliper, so that there, this boot here, that bolt goes straight through, then it's attached to this um, caliper carrier, but this entire thing, well, I can fucking do it. Yeah, she's pretty good, <laughs> pretty good right now, but um, yeah, you can see these rubber boots and stuff, and basically this caliper just slides backwards and forwards, so that's how it applies pressure to the back of the pad. You can see there's two pads in there, all is good and gravy, and they've got some cool little funky coating in there, and she needs a clean already. That is a floating caliper and it is self-aligning because it's all about pressure. You push the piston until you get just say a reaction force, a resistive force, and then it starts to pull the other pad until they're equal. It all equalizes out and squishes the shit out of your disc and help <laughs> hopefully slows you down. As soon as you release that pressure, it backs off again. All is good and gravy. And we're gonna do a video about that. On um, so the, this this disc arrangement, this this caliper arrangement is self-aligning. Now on a um, just say like a double-sided twin pot jobby, you'll have your disc again, like this, and then you'll have a piston here, a piston here, like this inner caliper, right? Which is what most front brakes are like nowadays. You can have so many pots or what have you, and then you'll have a brake disc in here and a brake disc in here. And basically what you're doing is, is you are fixing your caliper. Why do we want to fix our caliper? We fix our caliper just basically because it's stiffer that way. You can apply more force if you fix your caliper um, because it's rigidly mounted instead of floating around. Also stops twist and distortion and stupid shit like that. The other thing as well is heat dispersion through the caliper is better because it's rigidly mounted to your, just say your fork bodies or your stanchions, depending which way your forks are up. But anyway, you apply pressure like this, it applies pressure to the disc, and you start to slow down. All is good and gravy, and we're all happy. Now, the self-alignment of this is still based on the same thing. This has got nothing to do with floating discs. The ER5 has a rigid fixed front disc. This is because it's cheap <laughs> and old. But the ER5 here, has a rigid front disc there's no floating element to it or anything else like that the reason why is because this whole idea that your disc is floating because of alignment is complete bollocks right what happens is is you will have a disc like this and then you apply pressures from this side but you've got to remember these pressure lines uh this is your, your pistons forget your pads for a second or put the pads in the pads are there pad and the pad is there, pad, oops, pad is there. And these are your pistons, so the big P for your pistons, but they are connected through the same pressure line, like that. Yeah, obviously it's not like that, that's just crude shit and easy to see. <laughs> but when you apply a pressure, and let's just say this pressure is, I don't fucking know, uh, 2,000 kilopascals, let's just say, let's just go mad. Something like that. When you apply that pressure, that pressure is everywhere. So it's pressure in the lines, the walls on the lines have been feeling that pressure. This piston has that pressure applied and this piston has that pressure applied. So what happens is, is that as you apply pressure, um, if the disc is to one side, so let's just put your disc over to this side, like so, just say if your disc wasn't aligned, yeah, your disc is off to one side. When you apply pressure here, you're applying this 2000 kPa and you start to feel a resistive force here. This is the disc resisting that force. So you're trying to push against it and it's going, oh, it's getting hard to push. So then what happens is, is that everything goes the, le the path of least resistance, a bit like electricity and stuff like that, is that we've got 200 kPa here um, when we actually build up that pressure against that. But basically you'll have a resistive force. Let's just say, we'll get rid of that number. Let's just get rid of the units altogether, it's easier. Let's just say this is 100, right? We're applying 100 pressure that way. And then this disc is resisting with 100 because we've now just gone boop and we're not basically applying pressure to anything. It's just a force meets a force. On this side, the pressure is still being applied, but it's like 10, it's nothing. So what happens is, is that this starts to accelerate and is pushed and then this pad will meet the disc. 
your caliper piston will just push out further on this side. It's self-balancing until this reaches 100, this is 100, and the resistive force is 100 in both directions kind of thing, because we're now compressing that disc. The units aren't right, the calculations aren't right, I'm just trying to get a, around the um, concept of what's happening. So if you have twin pop calipers like this, this is self-aligning. So have you noticed, it's the caliper, it's the caliper that does the self-alignment, right? If it's, you've got twin pots either side, it's um, self-aligning because the pistons will come out to meet the disc and if there's no disc there it'll just keep on travelling until it hits it. I'll do a demo in the future with some syringes, you can see what I mean. Um, and if it's a rear brake, stuff like that, or even your front brakes if they were like that, or are like that, or whatever, it's a floating caliper. We have this way of moving where the pads sit to self-align with the disc. So. Having a floating disc has fuck all to do with alignment. It's nothing to do with alignment. So we'll put that one to bed straight away. You either have a floating caliper or your rigid calipers just make up for it. Rigid calipers are more expensive because instead of having one piston and a slider, you now have to have two pistons minimum. Floating discs. So you'll see that a floating disc is what we have, is we have a disc section, got a radius in there, we'll have this semicircle bit out here and this is our disc right this is our disc here like so and this will firmly expand outwards it'll all just go out this will all firmly expand outwards like so and then our hub carrier here like that and then this bobbin this bobbin just basically stitches the two together it holds the disc in place that's why it's got such a large surface area on both sides. It's basically like a rivet, but it allows this disc to basically peel away. It will move away from this hub carrier. Great, because that means that with the, the hub carrier that's mounting the whole thing together is not under stress because it's not happening. The other thing is as well is heat saturation. So as, we, as this disc gets hot and it tries to conduct heat down, it has got to come through this thin slither, this cross section. This bobbin's like this, and we take a cross section of that, it'll be a little slither like this. You know, if we look the way, you know, a cross section of this bobbin. So that's a very, that's a choke point, that's a very thin point there to conduct the heat from the disc to the, the hub carrier, which is absolutely great. And there's always usually a gap in here, a big bloody air gap. And then obviously, bobbins are usually, um, well, there's two reasons why they've got holes in. The main reason is, is because it's this choke point. Number two is it's also light. Number three is air can get through there and cool it if it requires, but it really they don't get that hot. We'll see all this in a future video. Um, but basically this just means your disc has room to expand. It also has room to expand laterally. So if you look at the, the, the disc head on, um, if we were to take a cross section of that, you have a bobbin like this like that and then you have your hub so this is your hub this is your disc there so this is your disc this is your hub carrier and then you have this bobbin and fucking hole in the middle like that and you'll notice that on a lot of these bobbins what they have is they have let me fucking clean all of this off they'll have the inner shank they'll and then have the kind of like the riveted side where they've been pressed together so they'll have this bit will have the inner bit of the bobbin. Some are made totally differently, depends how they're pressed together, stuff like that. And then what you'll notice is your disc fits in here like this, like that. And then you'll notice there's a bevel washer. There's a bevel washer in there between there. And what this is to do is this is to allow the thermal expansion. If this thing was rigid, if this bobbin came right up to this edge, Right, when this thermally expands outwards like this, it is going to lever apart that bobbin. It is going to basically dish the fucker out and it could possibly break it. It could pop the bobbin off, which you're in a world of shit then because your disc is fucking flapping around like in the wind. And it might just go ching and fall off somewhere. It won't fall off, it'll get trapped and it'll fuck your life up. But basically this um, bevel washer in here, this wave washer, is basically a spring. So what happens is when this thermally expands and comes out to here, there's room for it to expand into. And then the more that it, and then basically when it contracts, the 
uh, the bevel washer basically just fills back in that gap again. Um, it's not there to resist the thermal expansion, it is just there to make sure that this bobbin isn't flapping about. There has to be room for thermal expansion, but you don't want this thing sliding around and moving everywhere. The Z900's brand fucking new, them bobbins don't rotate and they don't move. Now you might be able to grab your disc and go like this and bend it. Well yeah, you can basically move against that bevel washer. You're also bending the disc itself, there's a bit of deflection there, there's a bit of a bending moment there stuff like that but these bobbins don't need to rotate to prove that they don't need to rotate EBC have just come out I say just it's probably years old now EBC have come out with bobbins that look like this that have a cross section like this and the reason why they do that is all to do with point contact if you have a circle like this and then you have a bridge around it and you shift because of forces the disc is going this way the brake calipers are trying to resist it going this way you are going to have a point contact there which means it's an awful lot of pressure for a small amount of area where with this they do the same thing like this so this is the hub carrier this is the hub carrier down here in black this is the disc up here in red like so and basically when these when these forces are applied so this is going this way or trying to go that way that's trying to resist it because it's part of your wheel it, your wheel wants to maintain its speed stuff like that then this is a lot of a, a bigger surface area so basically means you can it, it puts less strain on the disc because you can actually crumple you can actually warp your disc by applying too much force to it and when it crumples up it wants to just deflect and crumple just like it's crushing a can or something it crumples out so this is to reduce the amount of disc warpage and stuff when under heavy load because when they're heavy load they're hot very hot and that means they get softer and stuff like that and these pressure surfaces how much this works i don't know i'm not an ebc genius i haven't done any of the maths or anything else like that but you cannot rotate that bobbin if you look at that bobbin there is no it's got two flats on either side you can't rotate that bobbins don't need to rotate just fucking leave them alone what you don't want is you don't want free play in your bobbin and bobbins can be loose and as you if you take your bike out to something really cold or you chuck liquid nitrogen or something on it then they will be loose and all the rest of it if your bobbins are tight don't fucking worry about them don't start putting nuts and bolts through them to try and rotate them just fucking leave them alone they are perfectly fine it's all about thermal expansion the bobbins are just there to hold them in they're just basically rivets in a sense to hold them in location they have got lateral movement for thermal expansion i also did some graphs so i'll just quickly show you them this is a graph and this is a graph the difference between um the thermal expansion so i got the um try my hardest to find the alloy they use for these discs uh, this is actually a stainless steel disc and basically what you've got is as the temperature increases um you'll see the thermal expansion rate so the width of the disc is that one it goes up like that so this is the thickness this is the thickness of the disc that's how much it goes up i can't remember it was i think it was like 150 microns or something i'll put it on the screen it was last week i can't remember just for right to fuck off with work stuff and then if you look at the radial expansion so this is the thickness of the disc oh use the right colors you twat so green is the thickness of the disc so this is the disc there with that measurement and then this in the red is how big this is getting per diameter and it was d1 minus d2 for the diameter um and it's actually the radius and then you divide that by two and all that kind of shite but anyway the fact of the matter is you can see that this disc because there's a lot more meat will expand radially i think it was up to two millimeters if you get up to 500 degrees c which is a shitload and you if you think the whole thing's expanding by two millimeters you think if you had a rigidly fixed disc um so if your fixing points were here and they were rigid you're trying to shear you could shear that bolt off so you want to separate them two forces out the reason why old bikes dive is because old bikes didn't go that fast to break that hard to create that much heat to expand so much nowadays with these rate bike race bikes are making or you know fast road bikes making thinner lighter discs better materials and stuff if you are trying to slow down from 150 to zero or to 10 mile an hour whatever it, you need to dump a shitload of energy in those discs um and that energy you know that waste and that waste heat that energy that's just been transferred to those discs is heat and these discs have got to be able to make, basically take that 
and separating out the friction material, the friction surface, which is your disc, your rotor, versus your inner hub is very important. This allows for thermal expansion and it's always radially outwards. So that old bullshit about bobbins, just fucking leave them alone. Like I say, the Z900 is brand fucking new, then bobbins don't rotate at all. Hope that makes sense. This is what I mean about all these bullshit videos on YouTube. There are fucking loads of them. People are clamping bolts and nuts to their bobbins and giving them a twist with a drill. What the fuck are you doing? These are your brakes. Just fucking leave them alone. And then they make up bullshit. Well, you need these to be rotated. They've got loads of crunchy shit in them. Fucking leave them alone. What difference is the crunchy shit going to make? Absolutely fucking nothing because they're going to expand radially outwards. Don't fucking worry about it. Jesus Christ. Leave them alone. Just fucking leave them alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the other problem I had with them people putting them aftermarket bobbins in themselves. Oh, Jesus, no. Because that clearance between the disc and the bobbins has to be correct. And the preload on them and stuff like that. Just, just, no, just fucking don't. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.